So uh, this is going to be a demonstration here. It's a little bit um, different than the normal setup. I Believe me, I'm still here, and I am talking to you from behind the screen because I'm going to show you something, and I'll make sure you see these notes. We're gonna, today we're going to talk about how you can measure the quality factor from a microphone. This is really going to get you to understand what the quality factor is uh, mechanically uh, instead of just electrically using a different method. And if I cough during this uh, video, I am sorry. I have a little bit of a cough. So um, how can you measure the Q factor from a microphone? That's what we're gonna be talking about. And what I would like to start off with is looking at this demonstration setup. I have one fork here and I have a microphone and I also have another fork. And you hear that, you know, this is kind of like a, not a tuning fork, but it, it's going to have a ring uh, to this uh, system here. Um, and that ring then is going to cause, uh, well, that decay, like ding, that the, the decay in, in sound. And the quality factor, you can actually determine it from the decay in sound, just like if you have an LCR circuit, you can also determine the decay from the LCR circuit. You're also going to be able to do that from mechanical oscillation. And mechanical oscillation is so easy to measure using sound. Now, I can't exactly tell you the amplitude of oscillation, but I can tell you the relative amplitude. And from that relative amplitude, which is going to be scaling with the actual vibration amplitude of the fork, we're going to be able to measure the quality factor. And this is really cool. But the quality factor is going to depend on like our support positions. And it's gonna, this is a damped situation. Ideally, you'd like to have like a bar suspended with the foam and it's from a, uh, uh, from the center nodal point, uh, therefore you'd get the least amount of disturbance and, and the minimization of the quality factor. Uh, but uh, we will make do what, what we can do, which was what I have here at my office right now is a fork. Um, <coughs> so uh, let's continue to Audacity, which is a program I'm gonna be using to record. Now I'm gonna be pu uh, putting some notes uh, in the, uh, um, in the description later that you can kind of go through, but this is a free program that you can use to record. And I'm, again, I'm using this microphone specifically so I can get really close. No, otherwise it'd be kind of weird and annoying. So I have this microphone, I'm recording. I'm gonna make this big for everybody. There's a lot of noise in this. I'm actually talking and it's recording what I'm saying. Wow, it's a microphone. So let's try something. This is not piezoelectric. See that decay? I wonder if I can zoom in just a bit more and let this come at you live. Yeah, I like that decay. Now, because this is not a perfect bar, there's gonna be a lot of harmonics involved. I'm gonna stop this and I'm actually gonna record something I will use. Uh, so I will start the recording again, and I'm going to be quiet right now. All right, so you can actually perform noise canceling. So I'm just going to go ahead and do uh, noise reduction. These are pretty standard processes to do in, uh, in Audacity, so I'm not going to go over them. So look, okay, that cleaned up all of our noise. This seemed like the biggest, chunkiest one, but it didn't, it didn't really like, so you're gonna see all these different harmonics kind of going through, but you do have that decay. Now let's check out the other guy. It also is not the best. Um, and how about the first one? So depending on where you hit it, it's going to generate certain harmonics. I'm not 100% satisfied with all that, so I'm gonna try it again. And I want to get like more, a cleaner view. And also depends on how you hit it. You have to hit it very, very like, uh, very light and quick. That's how you get a good response. Otherwise you can't. Okay, let's, um, is that noise cancellation? Even if you can't get a good response, that's okay. I'm using a fork. Um, right, I'm not using a bar. Might do it with the bar later, but not today. 
Okay, nose reduction is there. Let's check it out. Now, I did that light hit instead of that. I intentionally kind of made it a little bit lighter. You do see there is a bit better quality. It's not perfect, but the quality is a little bit better. In this case, I do, so you can see the signs. That's good. So you can see the sinusoidal kind of deal, even though there's like a beat, there's like a frequency causing like oscillation before, it seems to be working out well. Now, if you have too much, um, I'm gonna make this even bigger for you. So you can see that. Uh, if there's too much um, other harmonics, so for example, let me just show you something here. I'll do that and I'll go to analyze up here analyze and then i'll go to plot spectrum um there and i think if it lets me do linear i don't know if it let me do linear uh but uh there's clearly like this this frequency which is dominant which is uh, the 7541 that is uh so there's a peak i'll probably take this up and maybe bring a little bit closer so there's the there's the peak frequency which is being shown here as you as you move around your cursor. Sorry, this is not perfect, but it is going to be good for you to to kind of follow up on and ask, feel free to ask questions and I'll pull some notes as I can. Um, is that screenshot program on? Let me just start that screenshot program. Resume capturing uh, capture screenshots every five seconds. And I got a meeting at the top of the hour, so I got to hustle. Okay, so uh, we got 75, uh, 41 at negative 14.1 dB, and that's what it says right here. Um, and this is frequency analysis plot spectrum. Uh, but there's also a lot, of, a lot of other frequencies, as you can clearly see there. So what I'm going to do, and what you need to do for this uh, equation, is you need frequency, you need change in i have change in velocity here but uh velocity one velocity two obviously velocity two is smaller square root of two uh is going to be for a 3 db drop and usually we talk in decibels for sound i'm honestly not that used to talking in decibels i usually talk in uh amplitudes that's just the language that i use and that i found more useful and find more intuitive for my own self uh but let's let's go ahead and um and configure this so let's let's say we have we're going to set our time step to this so it's going to be from z uh, five milliseconds is our time step okay so i'm going to put, put control b so i just know that first time first time um so i'm going to highlight that and then i'm going to do pull Yep, plot spectrum. Oops, not enough data there. Let's go one lower. So we were at uh, 7.5 kilohertz and negative 14.2 dB. Seven, seven, five kilohertz, hertz negative 14.5 db okay um then we're gonna have to look for the a three and a three db point coming up later so i will highlight this portion and let's just do uh let's just call that sample and i'll do the same analysis on that so this is 7.5 kilohertz at negative 16.2 dB. dB, so it's still 7.5 or so. Um, and that was a drop of um, almost two dB. So we'll have to go a little bit farther than that. Let's just go to the next sample here you can scroll over from there do that i'm going to control b to make it easier replot negative 17.2 oh 
we're really running into my next meeting here. Let's hurt. Let's hustle. Um. So let's just say this from negative fourteen point five to negative seven point two. That's three dB. Well, what's the time it took to get from one to the other? So now I'm going to highlight the first time. You know the the beginning to the beginning. Um. Okay, so that's zero. So this is a uh, this is f 15 milliseconds, right? 0 0.480295, yeah, 15 milliseconds. So time, fifth, um, 0 0.015. So we'll just implement this equation here and just note that um, if, if, you drop by, if you drop by 3 dB, you get the square root of two. So we're just gonna put all these, all these all these parameters in from this equation and I will also uh, and, and that's just that equation right there so the Q factor Q equals and this is 2 times maybe make it bigger for everybody 2 times pi times frequency divided by 2 times natural log um, square square root of two divided by this. I've been known to make mistakes on this before, so I hope I don't make a mistake today. Yeah, so we calculate the Q factor of 1,000. I'll just help you zoom that in for you. Of 1,019, uh, and this is the equation there. Uh, using um, using those other parameters, using time and frequency, um, and, and and the fact that we know this is negative three dB. So now we've just calculated um, the uh, the loss, or basically the time, the decay, and hence the actual, uh, also the uh, the Q factor of this fork sitting on paper. Now, if this fork was suspended in air at a normal point, if it was a bar, this Q factor would be ten times larger or even a hundred times larger than this. I've calculated for metals doing this, um, doing ideal type measurements, but this is for you to know. So you've been watching the Piezo Shock Show uh, with your host, uh, Dr. Shikani. Uh, check out the description for notes on this video. I'm gonna put some put some more screenshots in the video description for, for the, uh, in the presentation notes. You can find a link for that in the description. Also find a link for uh, on, uh, getting an idea about my consulting services and offerings. Uh, if you need personal help from an expert uh, to help you to traverse your ultrasonic transducer uh, product development challenges. Thank you and I'll see you all next time.